Um, councillors, thank you for taking that short break. Um, you should now have an amendment in front of you, um, which is a photocopied page, and you can now more clearly see the differences between the amendment that we just debated. Um, could I have a few more minutes, if that be possible? To, um, so, uh, Councillor Greco, if you keep typing whatever you're yeah, typing... Yeah, but I want to participate in the, in the debate, so I don't want to be uh, disadvantaged in that way. Um, I, I just need five more minutes, if that's OK. Councillor Greco, I'm going to proceed with the meeting, but you are welcome to keep typing... Um, your content, and I think that this will proceed slowly enough in terms of the debate on this amendment, um, that you will get five more minutes if you continue to work on the amendment that you're going to propose. So, um, Councillor Williams, we've got the amendment now in front of us. I'll ask the mover and the seconder whether they accept this amendment. I apologise because I crossed out the amount of the stimulus package, so I don't know if that is the right one that's been... Oh, sorry. No, C I'm looking at the, the right one. one. I apologise, sorry. Out. I'm looking at the wrong piece. OK, so um, I certainly have an amendment which crosses out a number of items that we have just debated and leaves... Um, it's much actually much clearer now. Um, how it's different from the previous. So if you can confirm that with the words crossed out, this is the amendment that you're now seeking. Not only are the words crossed out, but there's also in the darker bold is the new words added. OK, thank you for that clarification. That's helpful. So, um, councillors, I hope that everyone understood that the crossed out words aren't included. The bold words have been added and are different to the motion that we... to the amendment that we just debated. So I'll ask if the mover and seconder accept this amendment. No. No. No, um, Councillor Williams, that hasn't been accepted, um, so you'll need to seek a seconder. Could I have the motion read again, please, so that I fully understand it? Yes, um, it's on the table um, in front of you. Up the top, um, no, in a single sheet, might be up the top here. Um, Mr Mann's bringing you another one so we can make sure. So it begins with A, council subsidised tables, chairs, footpath trading, A boards, cafe screens, food act registrations and street training permits, subsidised Preston and Reservoir special charge scheme, special rates. I'm happy to second the motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Williams, your motion has been, your amendment has been seconded, so we'll now enter debate on the amendment. Um, you can um, begin the debate on the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Williams. These aren't just airy fairy ideas. These have actually come from listening and hearing from my community. And I think it's important that um, these amendments are, I have put forward are to ensure that they are clear actions of what the community wants and what they need. It's important that um, we consider what our community needs. It's important that we listen and hear what they have to say. So it would be very disappointing to see that if this gets voted down. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Greco is the seconder to the amendment. Do you care? I to reserve speak? my right to speak. Um, thank you. Uh, Councillors, are there any further speakers to the amendment? Um, Councillor Do I have a right to reply after everybody's spoken? Can I just confirm that, Mayor Rennie? Um, in relation to your motion, if your motion is amended, you do not have a right of reply. If your motion is not amended, you do have a right of reply. Thank you. So, um, in relation to this amendment, are there any further speakers? No? Oh, well, yes, okay. None and now two. Um, Councillor McCarthy. Um, thanks, Mayor. Um, Sorry. Uh, I find it a bit irregular that we're considering this because it does seem um, like a shortened version of the previous amendment, but um, I'll, I'll look past that and deal with the merits. Um, if I draw Council's attention back to the actual plan that we adopted uh, literally just over a week ago, um, a number of the things that are referred to in here, and I did state this in the previous debate, um, are either picked up or spoken to or engaged with. 
Um, there are specific support mechanisms that have been identified to support our local businesses. And the danger with what um, um, seems like a, feels like an 11th hour list of, of opportunities, I don't, it doesn't actually matter whether it, it's been 10 businesses, one business, or 100 businesses that have been consulted. This stuff replicates or duplicates or, in fact, contradicts some of the stuff that's in our existing package. And on that basis, I can't support it because it doesn't have the level of detail um, that we have already passed. In fact, it, it potentially creates more confusion when there doesn't need to be. Um, that's not to say that I don't um, appreciate um, Councillor Williams' um, efforts in putting together a list. I've got a list. I've got a great big list of all the things that, that businesses have been talking to me about. But you know what? When I go back and look at the list that we adopted just over a week ago, um, quite a few of those things have already been adopted, and some of those things I suspect may be the things that we need to consider in the next tranche. Um, I'm not going to go through these one by one, but I would just say that when we start talking about uh, advocating to state and federal governments to negotiate, and I think if I get the correct words here, negotiate utilities for business in the area, um, I actually don't even know what that means. I'm assuming that it means negotiating down the cost or negotiating waivers for the cost of utilities. That is the sort of stuff which our state and federal representatives should be doing. Uh, but they shouldn't just be doing it for Darabin-based businesses. They should be doing in fact, for businesses across the economy. And, in fact, speaking with some state representatives... Ten seconds. ...only a few days ago, they're already doing this. So let's not um, create confusion when there Thank doesn't Thank you. That's time. Our, our plan is already comprehensive and well-targeted. Um, thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Amir, did you wish to speak to the uh, just amendment? Briefly. <laughs> I was going to ask a question, but since that's not allowed, I'll um, do the opposite of what the community does and make a question into a statement rather than a statement into a question. <laughs> um, so I am speaking against this for the re same reason um, uh, for the last motion and acknowledging that these have not come out of the blue, that these ca have come from residence traders, um, also acknowledging as uh, Councillor McCarthy has said some of these are already included in our current package. Um, so although I won't be supporting this motion, I um, will um, suggest or um, see if it's possible that this list um, be passed on to the CEO for each item to be considered um, one by one and where there's a second second tranche or next wave or um, whatever the uh, phrase might be, if we do um, choose to commit further funds to the um, pandemic recovery process, that uh, these ideas be included in the mix uh, or perhaps uh, seek other ways for the similar goals to be obtained or you know, to um, push forward. So while I'll be voting against this in its current form because for process-related issues, um, I don't think that the feedback that's been provided should just um, be abandoned at this point. That that feedback to Councillor Williams and Councillor McCarthy and that I and other councillors have received um, should all be factored into the support we we'll, may provide to traders into the future. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Um, in relation to this uh, amendment, are there any further speakers? Um, Councillor Greco, you reserved your right. Do you wish to speak to... Thank you, Mayor Reddy. Look, um, again, uh, the, the suggestions that have been put here, I think are fairly practical suggestions. I think they're suggestions, as all councillors have acknowledged, that have come from the community. And the community is asking us to explore these um, suggestions. Um, and also, most particularly, the community is asking for leadership. It's asking for leadership in relation to how we uh, confront an unprecedented uh, event, which is the COVID-19 crisis. As a council, I strongly believe that we're not pulling our weight in relation to, um, to, to the crisis that is before us. Um, we'll see in the next six to 12 months exactly how many people it will affect, how many businesses will actually be um, um, and go bankrupt or not be able to open or, or go into financial difficulty as a result of these catastrophic events, not only affecting our city, but affecting worldwide. And, and I think that as a council, we should try to pull out all stops and explore as much as we can all the possibilities that we could put in place. I, I, I take the point that some things may be a bit uh, far-fetched, but let's explore them. Let's see how we can uh, implement them. Let's see what financial tools and mechanisms and, and sources that we can 
um, obtain in order to actually finance um, some of these um, uh, some of these issues, because it's important it, that that we do that. The community is actually looking to us to do that. Federal government's done that. State government has done that. They've actually borrowed beyond uh, the imagination of people. And, uh, and we as a council are going to go through this crisis without one dollar in debt when the community is actually screaming out to us about getting support from local government and th to things that they can do. And we're going to sit idly and say, well, we're not going to borrow a cent. We're not going to overly stretch our budget uh, because um, we have to look after ourselves and look after our own spending. And, um, and we really can't be too concerned about what the, you know, how the community is going to be impacted by I'd this. like to object to that. I find that offensive. Sorry, point so, of order, sorry, that's offensive. Um, Councillor Amir, you, you can't object to something that's said. Point of order, it's offensive. Okay. It's an opinion. Um, thank you for the point of order, Councillor Amir. I understand that you might have taken offence, but I would agree that that is an opinion that Councillor Greco has expressed, and um, he is able to do that. Um, so, Councillor Greco, um, I'll invite you... Um, to resume speaking, you have another 25 seconds. I have nothing further to add. Yeah. Um, thank you. Are there any further speakers to the amendment? No, we'll vote then on the amendment that has been moved by Councillor Williams. All those in favour? And against? That amendment is lost. Um, we'll now return to debate on the motion put forward by Councillor Messina, the substantive motion. We've heard from the mover, Councillor Messina, and the seconder, Councillor Newton. Are there any further speakers to the amend to the motion? Mayor, I have uh, two amendments that I'd like to move. Um, May, if I could have a few minutes to complete them, and and then I can um, actually send them through to the office uh, to the uh, councillors. And I apologise for this, uh, Mayor, because these are motions that I had written this afternoon, but for some reason they didn't go through on my computer, and I've been busily trying to uh, rewrite them and, and um, send them to, to councillors. Um, Councillor Greco, I appreciate that it's unfortunate those didn't come through on your computer. However, um, all councillors were asked for any amendments prior to midday today. Um, well, then, Mayor, I'll read out the, the motions, if you like. Thank you. Okay. Um, nice and slowly and clearly, if you could. Yep. Thank you. So the, the first um, amendment that I, I am putting as, as some additional, uh, as an additional uh, point, is that um, the council receives a report before the next meeting of, of council on a mechanism to a absorb the special rate charge applicable to shopping strip uh, traders for the last six months of the 2019-20 financial year and for the whole of the 2020-21 financial year. B. Stop. Stop. Just let's try and catch that bit. Okay, um, please continue, Councillor Greco, nice and slow again. Thank you, Mayor. B, um, Council match dollar for dollar the special rate charge applicable to shopping strips for the 2021 financial year to support local traders. Um, thank you, Councillor Greco. Could you repeat that nice and slowly again, please? Point B is that Council match dollar for dollar the special rate charge applicable to shopping strips for the 2021 financial year to support local traders. Um, thank you, Councillor Greco. I think that we've actually managed, the CEO's managed to capture those. Um, Councillors, can I check particularly the mover and the seconder of the motion being um, Councillor Messina and Councillor Newton? Um, whether you've understood that motion, uh, that amendment, this is um, Councillor Greco's first amendment, whether you need it reread in order to make a determination of whether you accept it or not. I'd like it reread, please, just so we're cle all clear. Um, thank you. Ms Wilkinson, are you in a position to reread that? Through you, Marini, I'll uh, do my best. 
So my understanding is that um, in addition to the substantive motion that is on the table, which has three points, um, there would be a new point four, which reads that council receives a report before the next council meeting on a mechanism to A, absorb the special rate for traders for the last six months of 1920 and for the whole of the financial year for 2021. And a, a, a new point five, which is that council match dollar for dollar the special rate charge applicable, special rate charge for traders applicable for the 2021 financial year to support traders. Um, I'll just first check that Councillor Gwecko, um, the CEO, reflected the motion. Yep, thank you. Um, and there appear to be some questions, so we'll um, get some responses to questions before I then go to the mover and second and ask if they accept it. Um, Councillor McCarthy and then Councillor Amir. Um, thanks, Mayor. It is really hard to, um, to try to understand what, what this is actually saying when you can't see it. I'm not clear from the motion, and maybe I probably need it read again, I'm sorry. Um, about whether it's actually asking for a further report about those things, because the second part sounds to be committing council to something this evening, which um, I'm deeply concerned about if we don't have any costings associated. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie. So um, the way I just repeated it was that point the new point four was calling for a report before the next before the next council meeting on mechanisms to absorb the special rate the cost of the special rate for the last six months of 1920 plus all of 2021. And then there was a, a, a new point no, five. No, it should be a oh. new point. So oh, point B also to call for a report. My apologies, so I, I didn't have that correct. So then that would mean that it would read the council receives a report before the next council meeting on mechanisms to A, absorb the special rate for traders for the last six months of 1920 and for the whole of the financial year 2021 and mechanisms for council to match dollar for dollar the separate rate charge for traders that would be applied for the 2021 year to support traders. So calling for a report, councillor. Thank you. Councillor Amir, did you have a question? Yeah, I just want to um, be clear on the intent of the amendment. So to make sure I understand using other language. So is the intent or your understanding um, through you, um, Mayor Rennie, to the CEO uh, that it's our, the report would look at uh, basically a waiving of... Uh, rates from businesses for the time period mentioned and that that um, value would be provided from existing from the existing council budget to the same value is that what's intended yes um, can I can I, I can I seek some further clarification from the CEO I've heard the word special rates charge um, and can you um, make it clear what the special rates charge is. Through you, Mayor Rennie, the special rate is a charge that is passed, is collected by council, but um, passed on entirely to, from traders. Um, so they uh, enter into an agreement where they pay a special rate. It is um, collected and pooled. Council is simply a, a collection agency, if you like, um, and we do it on behalf of the trader associations, they request that we do that for them. Um, and then the money is provided back to the trader group at large. And generally they use that for marketing and um, trader development and uh, promotion of shopping centres. The effect of this motion, um, this amendment, uh, would be to call for a report to understand whether council... Um, my understanding of it, Councillor Greco, would be that Council would um, explore the, the opportunity to absorb the cost of that. So rather than to collect that from traders, the Council instead pay it. Um, that's the first part of it for the, the, last six, the last six months of this financial year, all of next year, and then also to uh, double the contribution for next year. 
it's not double, to match. To match. To match yeah, their yeah, So the total amount would be um, twice yes. that that we would normally collect. Yes. So, yes, Councillor Amir. Um, so then just to be really clear, the scope of what we're discussing um, relates only to businesses who have an existing special um, rate charge in place and perhaps could list them at Northcote, Reservoir, Preston, whatever, three areas. Where, and yeah. okay. is, does not relate to uh, the general collection of rates of other businesses or those businesses and others where the special rate does, collection does not apply. Thank That's you. correct. There's and what's the value? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'd have to take the total value on notice. Um, the, there are four special rates that apply to shopping centres across the city. They tend to be the high street type centres. Um, it's similar to the special rate that you uh, considered earlier this evening with regard to solar savers where um, groups of uh, agreeable, um, in this instance, traders agree to form a collective, if you like, pool resources to market the centre. So it's something that's done, um, usually, it's usually a rate that's struck for three or four years, it's exhibited, um, goes through an exhibition process, a 223 process. So um, it wouldn't, the impact of this would not be relevant to other businesses outside those that are in the special rate area. Um, thank you, are there further questions? No, there being no further questions, I'll go to the mover and seconder and ask them if they accept the amendment proposed by... Can I just Brigham. have some clarity? Because we're going to and fro. So what we're asking for is just a report to understand the consequences of, number one, what the special rate levy is for all of the, the four areas that are mentioned, number one, and number two, to ask the special, ask the residents, ask the traders not to pay for that and then match dollar to dollar for dollar to initiate um, trade in those particular areas. Is that what that's asking, please? Um, I'll refer that to the CEO. Uh, through you, Mary, that's my understanding, Councillor Messina, that uh, the, the, the intent of this amendment would be to call for a report to explore the opportunities associated with a special rate and ways in which Council may or may not be able to further support traders beyond the package that's been adopted. Thank you, Ms Wilkinson. Are there any further questions? No, I'll then ask the mover and the seconder of the motion if they accept this amendment. Do you accept the amendment? Yes, I do. Yes, as well. Um, thank you, Councillor Greco. That amendment has been accepted. Um, that's now the substantive oh, motion. Can I speak, speak to it? Uh, well, you don't need to speak to the amendment. You have an opportunity to speak to the um, Councillor Messina's yeah. motion. Right. So um, if you would like to now... You, you did mention that you had a second amendment or was that the amendment in two parts? That's one amendment, and then I'll, I'll be moving a sec another amendment at another time. Okay. So if you speak to the uh, amendment... So, so I'll, I'll move then my second amendment then? I would suggest that yep. might be the best okay. way to go before you speak to um, Councillor Messina's Sorry, Councilor, motion. I have, to, I have to read this out again. Can, can you hear me? From, yep. Okay. Um, so it read like this. There are three, three points to this second amendment. Uh, one is that the... Um, that the uh, that the council advocate as a matter of urgency to the federal government to extend the wage subsidy to casual workers who have worked for an employer for less than 12 months and temporary visa holders who are affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, Councillor Greco, if you could say that again very oh, slowly. That, and... Council advocates as a matter of urgency to the federal government to extend the wage subsidy to casual workers who have worked for an employer for less than 12 months and temporary visa holders who are both affected by the COVID-19 crisis. That's the first point. Is that everyone got that? Or? Yep. yep. Okay, the, the second point is that um, that council uh, uh, council provides a report 
on how to extend. No, I'll start again. Uh, that that the council provides an, ex uh, an extended payment plan for residents to pay their fines within an ex with an extension till June 2021. That relates to parking fines and other possible fines that, that residents may get in this period. Um, Councillor Greco, I'll get you to repeat that again okay. slowly. That um, council provides an extended payment plan for residents to pay their fines with an extension till June 2021. Thank you. And the third, and the third point, point is this. The council provides a report on extending a rate rebate similar to the $150 rate rebate for pensioners to residents entitled to the federal government's job seeker and job keeper program. Um, again, nice and slowly. Thank you, Councillor Greco. The Greco. council provide a report on extending a rate rebate similar to the $150 pensioner rate rebate to residents entitled to the federal government's new job seeker and job keeper program. May, uh, can I note that I think um, some of the councillors are actually communicating by phone, which I think is really inappropriate and unprofessional and, and not worthy of this chamber. Um, so can I ask Greco, them not to Councillor communicate Greco, by phone? I, I'll note actually... Can you that note you, that, please? I will it's note happened on a number of occasions. I've ignored Councillor it. Councillor Greco, please stop, OK? But are you going to note it, Mayor? What I've noted is that you are also reading off your phone because you have put us in an unenviable position of trying to, to manage... Me, I'm reading to myself. I'm not reading to others. Councillor Greco, I have a phone in front of me. I have no sense that anyone is communicating with Come me, on, OK? let's be real. Let's be real. Councillor not... Greco, I, I, I object to that. I'd be biased. Councillor Greco... Yeah, if you sent it to us, we could have talked about it Councillor earlier, Amir. but you didn't, so we can't. Councillor Amir. Councillor Amir, please... Uh, uh, Councillor Greco, please order. take your seat. No, I have a point of order. I have a point of order. Um, I seek a, a retraction of that aggressive tone and aggressive action by Councillor Mia, and I seek an apology here and now from Councillor Mia. Councillor Greco, please take your seat. Okay, I... Mayor, I, I made a request. Um, yeah, it's a point Greco, of order. I'm not ruling on any request while you're standing up and still speaking. Please take your seat. Okay, you have raised a point of order. I, would, I note that prior to you raising a point of order, I had immediately stopped Councillor Amir firmly and strongly and told her to resume her seat and to cease speaking. I believe that in doing so, I have sent a very clear message that her outburst was unacceptable, but I equally send a message to you that your outburst was also unacceptable. The behaviour we have just seen in this chamber is not befitting of councillors and will not be tolerated. Perhaps I should have read my habitual statement at the beginning of this council meeting, which I do to remind councillors of the sort of behaviour that I expect in this chamber and, in fact, that the community expects of us all. Councillor Greco, you raised a concern. Please take your seat. You raised a concern about the use of phones in the chamber. I have told all councillors that it is not ideal for people to be communicating on phones. I have no idea what councillors may or may not be doing. I am concentrating on trying to record your amendment, which you leave us in the unenviable position of trying to get our heads around at the 11th hour because it was not circulated to everyone beforehand, for whatever reason. And so I don't think it is a reasonable thing to tell people that they can't look at a screen if what they are doing is trying to see whether this has been sent to them or in some other way get their head around an amendment that you are proposing at the 11th hour and which is long and complex on a topic which should not be decided without people having access to the full information. I think I'll stop there. 
and I will ask. May please I, take I have, your seat. No, may I have take a point of order? I have a point of order. You have to listen to my point of order. What's your point As of order? My point of order is, May, is that um, um, that uh, that the comments made by Councillor Amia, I find them to um, constitute improper behaviour and that they are offensive towards me. I feel bullied by those comments and I would like you, as Mayor, to ask Councillor Mia to withdraw those comments and again, okay. a promise to not make similar outbursts and bully type uh, remarks towards me. Councillor Greco. I believe I dealt with that point of order by reflecting the fact that I had already told Councillor Amir that her behaviour was not acceptable and that she was to sit down. Because you were both at that point raising your voices to each other, I did not even hear the content of her remarks to you and I don't intend to have them repeated because you are telling me they were offensive. And so I don't believe anything that you found in that way should be repeated. Councillor Amir, would you care to apologise to Councillor Greco for your outburst? I suggest that that would be wise because it was not appropriate to stand up and raise your voice at him. Uh, I'll apologise for the tone but not the content of what I said. Mayor, um, I think that's a conditional um, okay, uh, Greco. apology. I, I'm seeking uh, a clear apology with no conditions placed. Come on. Councillor Greco, I accept Councillor Amir's apology because, as I said, I have no idea what was said, nor do I wish to stop this meeting and further demean the role of councillors by having it repeated. So that, that, that is my ruling, and I suggest that we move on because I don't believe this is good use of anyone's time, and I don't believe it is a fitting way for us to behave in a council chamber. So I we are... So I believe that the CEO has... Yeah, yeah we've got the three, the three Can points. we read them out again? Okay, so I'll get the CEO to um, read out these three points so that we can um, get back to the business of council. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, so a new point five, and I did actually miss the end. I was going to rely on the tapes, Councillor Greco, but it starts that council advocate as a matter of urgency to the federal government to extend the wage subsidy for casual workers who have worked for an employer for less than 12 months, and that's as far as I got. And temporary visa holders who are both affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, but Mr Mann has that, so... Can I stop there? That's point one. What I'd like to do is actually ask the mover and the seconder whether they accept point one. Yes. Okay, Councillor. Yeah, I would Greco. like the, the, the motion to be considered in its totality. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I do not want the motion to be um, separated. So, I think there is a risk inherent in that, Councillor Greco. But if that is your wish, then it can be accepted in its totality. I would suggest that you may, for want of getting everything, get nothing. Um, are you sure that that is what you would like? Because what I've heard from the mover and the seconder is that they have just accepted point one, and that is now, if, if you... Okay, we'll, go, we'll proceed ahead, yep. Okay, so point one has now been incorporated into the substantive motion. Um, uh, Ms Wilkinson, if you could get to point two. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Councillor McCarthy. Just a, a question, if I can, that's, if I may. It's just a question um, through you, Mayor. Um, given point one seems to actually sit more naturally with... The existing point two of Councillor Messina's motion? Uh, Councillor McCarthy, I accept that, but I don't actually think it matters to how this action is delivered upon. So I do see that in, in the event that we're advocating to the federal government, it would be incorporated. Thank you. So let, let's just take it that common sense will prevail in the way in which uh, we act on the motion. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms Wilkinson. Uh, Through you, Mayor Rennie. Uh, so a proposed new point six, the council provides an extended payment plan for residents to pay their fines with an extension to June 2021. I'm happy to accept that. 
That's been accepted by the mover. Is that accepted by the seconder? No. No. Thank you. So, Councillor Greco, that hasn't been accepted. We'll go to point three now, and then I'll provide you an opportunity to seek a seconder for any parts that haven't been accepted. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor Eni. So, there would be a proposed point seven, new point seven. The Council provides a report on extending a rate rebate similar to the $150 pension a rate rebate to residents entitled to the federal government's job seeker and job keeper programs. Um, is that acceptable to the mover and the seconder? I'm happy to accept a report, yes. No. Okay. Um, thank you. Points two and three of your amendment have not been accepted. That means, um, Councillor Greco, you may seek a seconder um, for those, and we could debate those, point one having been accepted. Um, is there a second of a... I therefore moved and I seek a seconder for those two, for those two uh, amendment points. Um, thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams has seconded the those, so Councillor Greco will now enter debate on that amendment, um, noting that point one has been accepted, so we can keep that out of the debate. So just in relation to um, uh, point two and point three, uh, point two applies to fines that people incur over this period and that, um, and that they be given uh, opportunity to go on a, on a payment plan that extends to um, June, 20, 20, June 2021, similar, similar to the extension that we've provided to our ratepayers to pay their rates uh, by that period. Uh, it's not to say that the fines will be waived Far from it. People will still have that liability, given that they've um, breached uh, a bylaw of the council. Um, most commonly, it's um, parking parking fines, but it enables people to extend and give them flexibility to pay those fines up until June 22. And this particularly applies to um, low-income earners and people who are actually doing it difficult over this period of time. The third point is, again, is, is, is calling for a report. That's what it's doing. It's just calling for a report on extending the, on having a, a rebate for people who are affected by the COVID-19 crisis. And how do we determine that they are affected? Well, they would be eligible for either the rate keeper or the, um, um, or the, or the, or the job seeker program that the federal government has offered um, people who are in enormous difficulty as a result of losing their jobs as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. This gives them some sort of relief in terms of their rates, which, which will be one of the major um, payments that they will have to um, confront, even though they have an extension to the June uh, 2021, 20, uh, but they do not have any relief in relation to their, their rates. Pensioners receive a, a rebate because they're in, to acknowledge that their income is low. Because people that are affected by the COVID-19 crisis, their income will substantially decrease. As a result of that, we should, as a council, provide Ten some seconds. form of rebate to them so that they can um, get a, a rate discount given the difficult circumstances that they will be going through in the next 12 to 18 months. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Williams. I have nothing further to add to Councillor Greco's um, very informative and detailed um, explanation. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Are there any further speakers? I have a question through you, Mayor Rennie. Councillor Messina. How do we propose to know whether somebody's on those allow the new uh, job seeker payments and the other um, incentives issued by the federal government? How do we align that? Um, thank you for that question. I'll refer that to the CEO. <coughs> Through you, Mayor Rennie. Thank you for the question, Councillor Messina. Um, that element of the um, amendment, proposed amendment, calls for a report. So uh, that would be something we would have to explore, um, the feasibility and the ability for Council to establish that as part of that report back to Council. Um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not sure, but... Uh, uh, if this amendment was approved, we would look into ways to, to resolve that. I have a supplementary question. Uh, yes, could you Councilor tell Massimo. me what amount uh, of in the budget that will reflect? So that uh, $150 rebate, approximately how much would that be, please? 
Um, thank you to the CEO. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie, I absolutely would have to take that on notice because uh, it depends on how many people are affected and how many of those are actually ratepayers. Um, yeah, so uh, there's just no way for me to answer that for tonight, Councillor. Thank you. Further questions? Yeah. Um, Mayor, just, I just wanted to get clarity, first of all, um, the second point, which was uh, in relation to payment plans for fines, um, was that requesting a report around that or was that proposing to implement that? Um, to the CEO. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Thank you for the question, Councillor McCarthy. The, the proposed amendment reads that Council provides an extended payment plan for residents to pay their fines, so it doesn't call for a report. Can I ask a further question? And thank you um, to the CEO for that um, uh, detail, given that we haven't received this until now and uh, um, operating on ears, not eyes. Um, does Council currently have an arrangement in place where people who have been issued with a fine can engage in a payment plan um, in relation to the payment of that fine? Does that provision currently exist? Um, Ms Livia, are you able to answer that question? Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, if a fine's still in the initial stages, so within 28 days of issue, and there's hardship being experienced, um, we can initiate a 30-day extension of time. Um, and so that's sort of a standard process that we use. Actually, once that fine is lodged with Fines Victoria, their process kicks in, um, and there's an application for a payment plan approach um, that can be made online to Fines Victoria when they're in that later stage. Can I ask a subsequent question just in relation to that? And I thank uh, Ms Olivier for that explanation. So if Council was to give serious consideration to Councillor Greco's proposal, um, what would be the implications in relation to the process issues with Fines Victoria? Ms Olivier? Uh, I'm not sure I can fully answer that question. We, what I don't fully understand is whether we could hold the, pro the fine with us before referring it to Fines Victoria, um, or whether in fact we lose the right to claim that fine at all. So I don't fully understand the implications of that decision tonight. Okay. Uh, if, I'm, um, if there are no further questions, I'd like to speak in relation to the two Thank items. you, Councillor McCarthy. I'll just check if there are any further questions. No, okay, Councillor McCarthy, over to you. Um, in relation to the point two, I, I actually... Um, I see a lot of merit in what Councillor Greco is proposing. Um, and I think if, in terms of extending the option, um, as we have with, uh, with rates for both residents and, and for traders, um, which we have done in relation to the hardship policy that was adopted at the special council meeting, um, I think this is a logical approach in relation to looking at how we deal with the fines matter. Because as Councillor Greco has po rightly pointed out, there are people that are doing it tough. And they're doing it tough on many fronts, and that stress can cause people to put themselves and, and to find themselves in situations where they, in fact, attract fines where they otherwise may not have, because their normal going about through life in, results in them doing things that actually are the result of stress and anxiety. We don't want to exacerbate that. Um, however, I'm not comfortable with the idea of us adopting that tonight without actually being able to get a clear answer. And it's not, no criticism out of our officers, but we're going into territory where we actually don't understand the implications of it. I would encourage Councillor Greco to consider putting this request, as I would have hoped it had been done in advance, um, to our officers for the information about that so that we can actually consider that. I'd be really open to the idea of us considering this at an upcoming council meeting, whether it's through a notice of motion, um, but I would like some work to have been done beforehand before it comes to the chamber. We cannot make a decision in relation to an item like that if we do not know what the implications are. And it's, once again, it's no criticism of the information available here tonight because this is literally the first time we've heard about this. So I would really welcome Councillor Greco to come up with something along these lines um, and to go through the, the, the process of putting it forward and getting some officer in, input into it so we can consider it at a future meeting. In that case, I'd be really inclined towards considering supporting it, but I cannot support it tonight if we do not even know what the implications are going to be um, and the confusion Ten it may seconds. create. In relation to the third point, I think this is problematic. Um, to, uh, to actually be creating an expectation that I don't think Council can fulfil, because I suspect that the number of people entitled to both of those payments is going to be literally in the thousands. And, Thank you, uh, Councillor McCarthy. That's time. Message. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Newton. 
Thank you, Mayor Rennie. So I'd like to speak in opposition to both of these. So similar to Councillor McCarthy, I'm not really against the, the principle of looking at if there's ways to make it easier for people who might have had parking fines. Like, I'm not against the principle of it. But we're already in a pretty challenging situation here. We don't have the screen up with us. We're separated physically. Um, and we haven't seen this until tonight. And we did specifically get an email from the mayor um, to say that we wanted any amendments to come through before midday today. So for me, you know, it's 8.40 at night. I'm sort of trying to get my head around this. And I think it's challenging for the officers to be able to answer these questions when it's the first we've heard of it. Um, so for me, I can't support it either for that reason. And I think particularly something like the second or the the point about parking fees, which wasn't calling for a report, but was calling for implementing it without having that in writing, without knowing about that until 8.30 tonight, I can't support. And I agree with Councillor McCarthy that I think it's great to talk about rate relief, but we're talking about a situation that is really, really difficult to balance what we need to do and what we need to provide as essential services for council and to redirect more resources to relief, food relief, the real basics that people are needing right now. So while I understand the intent of the, of the motion, of the amendment, um, I just think that we have to be fiscally responsible to be able to provide the services that we need to provide and we can't on the fly think about rate relief. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Are there any further speakers to the amendment? There being none, I'll put the amendment to the vote. All those in favour and against? That amendment is lost. Noting, Councillor Greco, that the first point had already been incorporated, so um, that is now part of the substantive motion. So we'll return to debate on the motion. Just make sure I've got my right page. So we have heard from um, the mover, Councillor Messina, and the seconder, Councillor Newton. Are there any further speakers on the motion? Can we speak on the motion? Um, you can speak to the motion, Councillor Greco, yes. Oh. Okay. So this is the substantive motion with all the inclusions? Yes. In yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I thank councillors for um, including... Um, some of the points that um, other councillors have raised, including myself, in the substantive in the substantive motion. Also, thank Councillor Messina for putting forward um, this particular motion on the agenda tonight. Because if Councillor Messina did not put this motion on the agenda tonight, we would have had no discussion on the coronavirus crisis here in council tonight. So I thank Councillor Messina for putting a notice of motion, which enabled us to further talk about the, what Council's response ought to be in relation to the coronavirus. Um, I, I will just um, focus in on the, the, two, the two elements that were not included in, in my motion, in my amendment, and they were calling for a report about extending a, a, a form of rebate for, um, for people affected by the coronavirus. Again, it's calling for a report, councillors. It's, it's looking at options, councillors. It's looking at what sort of relief we can actually provide our community, councillors. And um, let's get that information. Let's show leadership in what we can do in regards to the community. In regards to the parking infringements or the fines in general, yes, I put in there that we need to do this. We're in very fluid times, fast moving times. Let's get, that in. Let's get our officers to work on it. If it doesn't work, I'm more than happy for our officers to come back to us and say, councillors, we cannot do it because of these legal impediments, but let's go on the front foot in relation to these things and not be overly bureaucratic and, and, and process-driven in a situation like we have now, which is unprecedented, councillors. So um, we did this bit of work in relation to the, the relief package that we had, where we put through quite a few things. Ten seconds. I just don't understand councils, why councils are so financially conservative in relation to dealing with a massive crisis that it's affected our community. Thank it's you, going to come back Greco, and bite time. us as a council. 
Um, are there any further speakers? No, there being none, I'll now put that to vote. I'm sorry, Councillor Messina, you don't get a right of reply because the motion has been amended. So I'll now put Councillor Messina's motion to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried unanimously. We'll note that that was a unanimous decision. Thank you, councillors. Um, we'll now move on to item 11, reports of standing committees. There are none, I think, but I made a mistake once in the past, so I don't want to do that again. <laughs> um, Reports, uh, records of assemblies of councillors, moved by Councillor McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Williams. All those in favour? Reports, uh, consideration of reports considered confidential. Uh, thank you, Councillor Messina has moved that we go into camera, Count seconded by Councillor Williams. All those in favour? Sorry, Mayor. Sorry, we haven't done reports by mayors and councillors. Sorry, we had... Report, no, you're quite correct. Thank you. No. Reports Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to wind us back. We did actually vote on going to camera, so formally I'm actually going to ask that we vote on going out of camera. Can that be moved by Councillor McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Mayor? We'll make the meeting public. Thank you. All those in favour? Sorry, I just, because we'd voted one way, we needed to reverse that to vote the other way. Um, we'll now move to reports of staff. Mayors. Reports by mayors and councillors. Move that way. Thank you. Moved by Councillor McCarthy, seconded by Councillor Greco. All those in favour? And thank you, Councillor McCarthy, for picking that up. Move so we'll now move um, to go into camera. Thank you. That was moved by Councillor Messina initially. Yeah, seconded. Before, before we move, we'd actually take a vote. I note the time. Maybe we should just as a... No, that's daylight savings time, oh, Councillor okay. Greco. We're okay. Yeah. It's eight forty-seven. Yeah, no, not a problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we'll get that fixed. <laughs> okay, um, councillors, we didn't actually raise our hands to vote on going into camera. So, can I just have a show of hands? Thank you. So, um, I'll just get, uh, make sure that we've stopped the live stream. <laughs> 